Hi y'all. Today I wanted to show you a book that I got. This is one of my very first books on magic. It was gifted to me by my wonderful mentor who I love very much. It is Everyday Moon Magic by Dorothy Morrison. I have reviewed two other books of hers on my channel, The Craft and The Craft Companion, and this one definitely deserves a review because or a look through. I don't review. I look through and let you see. And I think that's what's interesting. So we're going to take a quick peek inside Moon Magic by Dorothy Morrison. Everyday Moon Magic Spells and Rituals for Abundant Living. Dorothy Morrison is a third degree Wiccan High Priestess of the Georgian tradition and is currently engaged in studies with Raven Mist Circle. Now, I don't know how much of this is still true because I don't actually know when this book was published. Let's see. My particular book is a first edition, fourth printing in 2008. The copyright for this book was in 2003. It is a Llewellyn publication. So let's take a look at the content, shall we? Here we go. Contents, let me get you focused. There we go. Part one, the mystical magical moon. We have cultural lunacy, sheer lunacy, moon phases and their magic, full moon magic. Okay, and then we have the celestial connection. Part two, lunar enhancements. And you can pause that if you want to look. And the finishing part of part two then we have full moon phase efforts you can pause that waning mood phase efforts and your appendixes and bibliography and index part one the mystical magical moon Dorothy Morrison's writing is absolutely beautiful I love it so much it is she was the first practitioner that I read her work and understood, and it just flowed like, I don't know how to explain it. You know when you read a book and you just feel that shit? That's what I could say about this book. I just felt this, and it was great. So, we have Cultural Lunacy, which is Chapter 1. And in it, we have the Lunar Clock. We have Feminine Mysteries. I'm sorry. I didn't feel like pausing. The Natural Connections. Let's turn the page. The Lunar Meteorologist. Feminine Mysteries. Lunar Folklore. It's just a lot of information here. Lunar Superstition. The Devil. Fence Building. Fishing. Home Building. You know, the whole nine yards. This is a lot of stuff that seems like it's included in, like, the Farmer's Almanac. Like, which days to do what. The Moon. Wait. The Moon and Magical Manifestation. You know, I think I want to reread this book now. Sheer Lunacy. And it goes into the things about, you know, sheer lunacy, about, you know, law enforcement has, you know, more incidents during a full moon, and the magical connection. She also has, I mean, there's just so much information about everything to do with the moon. And one reason why I am showing this book now is we just went through a full moon in Scorpio, and I thought I would share this book because, you know... It's pretty beneficial. Psychic control ritual. One small white candle, one small piece of hematite, neck champa, sandalwood, or dragon's blood incense. These are reasons why I love Dorothy Morrison because some of her spells, most of her spells, are what I call the keep it, the keep it simple method that I absolutely love. Less room for error. The next section was on the full moons for every month, but I'm going to show you April. This is where April, the hair moon, begins. Then we have the magical efforts, sample, hair moon, invocation, 
hair moon circle ideas, hair moon party ideas, and this is for every month of the different moons, and then the rest of the information about the moon, the hair moon, but we call it the pink, I call it the pink moon, that's the one, that, the pink moon. But there's lots of ideas and celebration ideas, rituals, things you can make your own in here, and I really like that. Next, we have the Celestial Connection, talking about moon phases and how important they are when it comes to magical mundane or even gardening results. And since our last moon was in Scorpio, I'm going to show you the Scorpio moon sign, commonly known as the occult sign of the zodiac. It's been said that Scorpio is the ultimate when it comes to the magical arena. I think that depends upon your practitioner. But anyway, here is more information about the Scorpio Moon and Scorpio Moon Affirmation. Next, we have Lunar Enchantments. You have your Waxing Moon Phase Efforts. Then here's an example of what she is talking about with Waxing Moon Phase Efforts. She gives you acceptance for in that phase of the moon, a spell for attention to make people notice you. Automobiles, balance, it's all after medical order in this particular phase of the moon. This is waxing. My air came on. Business, change, you can see where I'm going with this. There's a spell for almost everything you can imagine in here. Charging and consecration to charge a candle. I mean, she doesn't leave anything left, you know, to speculation. And that's a really good thing. That's a very, very good thing. A spell to increase business cash flow, materials, one small piece of adventuring, if I'm saying that correct. How can that not be any more simple? I mean, I don't understand how people couldn't just use this spell and just make it come into fruition. It's so perfectly simple. And that's what I love about Dorothy Morrison. Here is a waxing moon phase goals manifestation spell you need paper and pen red marking pen highlighting pen of any color and one yellow candle now I'm gonna pan back so that you can read this yourself and then I'm going to pause and turn the page this I think is a fabulous little spell I like it very much and I hope that some of you will, you know, maybe try it out. Let me know how it works for you. Health and healing. Spell to ensure good health. All you need is a glass of water. That's a waxing moon phase spell. See, I love this book. To sell your home. Everything. Let's see what the next phase has. This is also waxing moon phase, but I liked the meditation Now we're to full moon phase efforts. Change being the first. Here's one for courage in the full moon phase efforts. Bay leaf courage charm. For best results, perform the spell on the wolf moon. Good results can be obtained during the waxing moon. One bay leaf. Everyone could use a little more courage. Full moon incense material, an eighth of a teaspoon of anise, one teaspoon of lavender, one teaspoon of rosemary, and a charcoal block. Mix the herbs during the full moon, then charge the incense by saying something like this, by pregnant moon that lights the night, I free your power to take flight, and bring the things I ask of thee, as I will so mote it be. Burn on charcoal block. Love it. Love everything about it. Okay, guys, here is a full moon love spell. And I am going to start here and pan my way down. If you want, you can copy, pause. And if you want to use this spell, that's why they sell the books. They don't mind us sharing it.
because there's no way that I'm going to read all that to y'all because I would mess that up. <laughs> now I've come to our waning moon phase efforts and it begins with abuse. Anger relief tea. Now who couldn't benefit from this? I know I could. This is the rest of the anger release. Here is one for panic attacks, and I can definitely relate to this one. I forgot about this one, actually. We have one for depression and dieting, enemies. Let me swap hands. trying to do this without I don't have a tripod or anything like that I don't be fancy because you know I'm just on YouTube to share my books and that's all gossip stop gossip everyone can use that these are waning moose moon face spells that you're seeing now if you see something that you want me to let you see closer just let me know like I say I check my email about twice a week depending on how I'm feeling Yesterday was a not a good day for me. These are samples of what the sections under the different phases look like inside of the book. To reverse a love spell. Look at that. Nice. Luck. Money. A debt banishing spell. Obstacles. Remove obstacles. There are so many wonderful spells in this book. It is just unbelievable. And then we have our appendixes. Appendices, I assume. I don't know. Someone will correct me. And the back of the book. As I said, this was a gift from a woman that I met. I'm showing my age here back on MySpace. When I first began to... Let me back away. I've done folded the cover a little and now it's come out. Um, when I first started to look into what I had already been doing for many, many years of my life, but had no name attached to what I was practicing. And I think a lot of us can relate with that because that is definitely what happened with me, myself, is that I had been practicing magic of my own for a number of years and had no earthly idea what to call what I did. And I met my friend. She was from Maryland, and she has since moved to uh, another country, but we still keep up on Facebook, of course. But she sent me a box of books when we became friends, started talking, and this was one of them. And I have cherished this book since the day I got it. It is wonderful. If you haven't read Dorothy Morrison, I highly recommend that you do. If you are a beginner, the craft might seem a little dated, and it is Wiccan, but you have to understand, and this is what a lot of people, and I'm seeing this a lot on YouTube lately, people don't seem to understand that you can be, I'm reaching for a drink, eclectic. Eclectic means that you draw from many different pantheons and different um, aspects of the craft. You might resonate with Celtic goddesses, Roman gods. You might practice hoodoo. And then you might decide that you want to throw in a little folk magic. Or you might want to throw in a little Santeria. Or, you know, being eclectic and drawing from different pantheons does not matter. And you do not have to have a bloodline in order to be able to draw from those pantheons. I want to throw that out there for anyone who has been listening to some videos where... People claim to be every race under the sun and feel like they have the right to pull from everything, but you don't. Do what is good for you. You don't have to do what anybody else says. You don't have to conform. You don't have to fit the norm. Be you. That is my message for you at the end of this video. If you've gotten this far, I love you. Thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate my new subscribers. Y'all are wonderful. And... I hope you all have a very blessed day, and remember, you can do any kind of magic you want. It doesn't matter what color you are, what your background is, 
You can read, you can learn, and you can do it. And don't let any witch tell you anything different because witches that try to aren't real witches. I love you guys, and y'all have a wonderful week, and we'll speak soon. Bye for now.